Tonight we're going to be looking at two stories who are similar in nature. One happens in a galaxy far, far away, and the other one just happens on the other side of the planet, like a couple thousand years ago. So first of all, let's talk about Anakin Skywalker. Some of you said you have never watched Star Wars before, right? Okay, cool. So here we have Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi. We have Anakin in a pod racer. We have Anakin with his future bride who turns him into an evil person. And then we have Anakin and his slave master who was Watto? Well, you should have played that, that Yoda video with it. Dude, I got this. I got this covered. So, uh, Obi-Wan is, what, Ewan McGregor? Is that his name? Yes. Ewan McGregor, yeah. The guy with the chopped up hair, not the little kid. That's Anakin. But, so... Ewan McGregor, or Obi-Wan, comes to Tatooine and he finds Anakin. Anakin is enslaved by this weird, like, anteater-looking alien named Watto. Obi-Wan is told that Anakin has this outrageously high concentration of midichlorians, which basically is dork for he's going to be the chosen one, the super Jedi. So they find out that he has this because he's in a pod race, and humans apparently don't have enough twitch reflexes or whatever they're not fast enough to be able to survive these things and they always die but little bitty anakin was able to beat everyone and the cheater who tried to kill him whatever his name was what was his name uh, wait, wait. Spock. sure spock um spock. and so he beats him and so he gets his freedom from Watto, and he goes with with uh, obi-wan kenobi and they leave the planet and he starts his jedi training he falls in love with padme who is lady right here um, even though he was not supposed to, because it was against the rules for a Jedi to have any kind of attachment to anything. But being a Jedi was not enough for little Anakin. Next, let's transition to Scripture, because that's what we're here for. Choose wisely, you must. Like I said, Abram had a nephew named Lot. Haran was Lot's father. So let me give you some context here. Haran and Abraham were brothers. Haran dies Lot goes with Abraham. Abraham is pretty wealthy, and then Lot ends up becoming wealthy as well. They have a lot of sheep and goats and cows and whatever else people had in ancient Israel and Hebrew times. But they had too much for the land, and so the people that were their shepherds were arguing with each other, trying to figure out who was going to take possession of the land. And then Abram tells Lot, he's like, hey man, we're family, let's not argue, let's figure this thing out. So let's go to the first scriptures we're going to look at, Genesis 13, verse 8. It says, so Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. It is not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If to the left, then I will go to the right. If to the right, then I will go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the valley of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed it. Uh, like the garden of the Lord. So it was like the garden of Eden, like the land of Egypt as you go to Zor. So Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. So Lot was looking at all of the land and he sees this land in the west is beautiful, it's great for farming, it's great for grazing, and he looks to the left and it's like, eh, it's okay. So he takes the better of the two options. And Abram's cool with it because Abram's like, look, man, we're just trying to survive. So Lot goes to this greener pasture, the greener grass, and they separate from each other. We see that it doesn't stop with this though. It says in verse 13, it says, Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. So when Lot separated himself from Abram, he severed this relationship that he had with a godly man. Anakin had a crush on Padme that turned into desire, and he was focused on these things. Lot was focused on the greener grass, although he was standing right outside of this threshold of evil. So whether he knew it or not, that was an important detail, whether he knew it or not, he was pitching his tent towards sin. And so we see that he originally was outside of the city, but as the story goes on, he actually moves into the city. So Lot separated himself from godly influence, and therefore he opened up himself to the temptation of the wicked men of Sodom. We learn our first lesson here from these two men. This is lesson number one. They both had a positive influence in their life. Obi-Wan was a Jedi master, which means he was a man of integrity. He was a man that was morally good. Abram was called by God, which means that he was blessed. But neither Anakin nor Lot felt like it was good enough. So they chose to take a different route. Anakin, even with the proper training, the proper mentorship, chose to follow the dark side. Lot, even though he was living with a godly man, chose to go to Sodom. Each one of you has a choice to make daily. All of you have godly men and women in your lives. Whether that's your parents, your youth pastor, most days, your small group leaders, maybe even some teachers or some friends. 
you have godly people in your life, but you also have very wicked people in your life too. The choice of the matter is, which voice is louder? When you're thinking about the godly people in your life versus the wicked people in your life, which ones are you listening to more? Which one are you listening to more? Let me tell you the difference between the light side and the dark side. So go on to that slide. Light side says the selflessness, joy, spiritual, everlasting, compassion, calmness, knowledge, defense, and difficult to achieve because it takes discipline and self-control. This is what, uh, what was the creator of Star Wars? George Lucas? George Lucas said about the light side. It also sounds very familiar to the fruit of the Spirit. Then the dark side, driven by possessiveness, greed, selfishness, pleasure-seeking, anger, and fear, also sounds a lot like what the Bible calls sin. So these are what we're looking at. So these men had a choice to make. Were they going to follow the godly side or the light side, or were they going to follow the dark side or evil? So when they decided they were going to go against what their mentors were telling them, they decided to split and separate from the mentors. We see that trouble came. So as we continue on in the story, everyone has a Yoda quote, except for the last one. But we see that Anakin had this crush on Padme and it turned into desire. He allowed his lust for Padme to overcome his willingness to be a Jedi. And so even though he was supposed to be single and celibate as a Jedi, he pursued her regardless of the consequences. He didn't care what was going to happen. He just wanted her. He began hiding his intentions from his mentor or his trainer, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and began dealing with this inner turmoil. Anytime that you know what's right and you still struggle to choose what's wrong, you're going to have this inner turmoil in you. And that's what's going on with Anakin. This caused Obi-Wan to be suspicious and no longer trust him. And it led to worse things. Lot, he moved not just towards Sodom, but he moved into Sodom. He went from being on the outside looking in to fully participating in some of the things that Sodom was doing. What happens in chapter 14 brings Lot into a conflict of him living within Sodom. So if we go to chapter 14, it talks about how these kings were tired of having to live under the rule of a guy named Cheddar Laomer. He was not cheese. But they, he was a king that basically controlled Sodom and Gomorrah. And these two kings got together and they said, look, we're tired of this. They had been following his rule for 12 years. They had been surrendering what they had for 12 years. And so they tried to overthrow the king and they lost horribly. So Cheddar Laomer sent his forces in. They stole everything from Sodom and Gomorrah, all their possessions, all their food. And because Lot was living in the city, he was kidnapped and enslaved as well. Abram finds out about this from an escaped um, convict or felon from the war and tells him, hey, they've got Lot. You need to go rescue him. So, Lot, so Abraham gets like 312 men and goes and wipes out this king and rescues Lot, takes him back. And you would think that Lot would have learned something from this. You know, don't associate yourself with sin but we see that he moves back into Sodom, so he clearly did not learn his lesson. So, let me ask you this. How many times have you gotten in trouble and needed someone to rescue you? Has anyone ever had that before? More than once, twice, maybe three times? How many times have you been influenced by the wrong people and had to deal with the trouble that comes along with it? How many times have you let somebody else get you in trouble? This ain't tea, but it sips the same. So I think we can identify with Lot and with Anakin here. <laughs> just laughing, man. I'm just laughing. All right. Just like Anakin and Lot, lesson number two, we are held accountable for our choices. And we have to deal with the consequences. If we surround ourselves with godly influences, what's going to happen? We're going to make godly decisions, at least most of the time. If we surround ourselves with evil people or people that are not believers, what are we going to do then? Hmm. We're going to make stupid decisions that cause us to have a lot of trouble. When we stop listening to our godly mentors, it can cause inner turmoil to where we no longer listen to the Holy Spirit. We may hear him, but instead of us following him, we allow ourselves to be controlled by our flesh. And those of you that aren't Christians, you don't have to worry about that because you don't have the Holy Spirit anyway. So you're just controlled by your flesh anyway. What? But, and here's the thing. We always think that, you know, it's this, this one big event that causes us to fall into sin, but it's not. It's the little things. It's small sacrifices that we make, small compromises that we make in our lives that lead us from being an honest kid who tells the truth to a kid that's about to end up in prison because they did something stupid. It's a slow fade. There's some of my casting crowns that came out like 10 years ago that talks about it. It's not just a one time thing. You don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go murder somebody. It takes a while to get there. 
You don't wake up and say, I'm going to go rob a bank. I mean, if you look at your banking account, you may, but it's not just like a, a day one thing. It takes a while for you to get to that point. It's these little minor compromises that you think don't really matter that much. So like, for instance, you know that it's wrong for you to do something, but you lie to your parents about it. And it may not seem like a, bad de- a big deal. But then when they find out, you get in more trouble because you've lied. You know, you're supposed to do your homework, but you choose not to do it. And as a result, you don't do your homework a lot. And then you end up getting an F on the test and your parents get angry at you again. But then you stop trying and you quit school and you end up in prison. So, I mean, it's a slow fade, but it happens. Somehow we get there. Look, we don't have that much time. We're trying to get the small groups. But it's, it's the little things that we compromise in that we don't think are a big deal that end up becoming the big things. And then we look back and we're like, how in the world did I get here? It's because it started with the first thing. It's the small things that get us to where we're going. So we tend to try to push things, push the envelope as much as we can to see how far we can get along without falling or until we get caught. So what happens in the story is for both of these men, they come to a crossroads. Your path you must decide. Genesis 19, 1 through 29. Here's where our stories diverge, though. For Anakin, he comes to the point where he has to choose between good and evil. He was terrified because he kept having these visions that Padme was going to die in childbirth. Spoiler alert. The movie's like 20 years old, so get over it. But he was terrified that she was going to die in childbirth, and so his love for Padme was greater than his allegiance to the Jedi. So Emperor Palpatine, new character, you'll see him in a second, told Anakin that he had a way that he could save her life. And so Anakin's like, okay, we're going to do this. Anakin didn't care what it would cost him. All he cared about was his wife. Palpatine actually was a Sith Lord. He was like the devil. And convinced Anakin that the dark side of the Force could save her. His watershed moment was whenever Anakin was fight, or whenever Mace Windu was fighting Palpatine. And I've got that clip, so let's roll it. <clears throat> I do not own the rights to this video, YouTube. That is not Nick Fury, that is Mace Windu. You're fulfilling your destiny, Anakin. Become my apprentice. Learn to use the dark side of the Force. I will do whatever you ask. Just help me save Padme's life. He sacrificed his soul to save his wife's life. But he should have never been with her in the first place. To your teachings. And that's when Alec comes in with his trumpet solo. All right. So. What's that? If it wasn't the Jedi way for that one dude, like, I'm going to die. Then how is it the Jedi way for that other dude to die? The other dude was supposed to die, and it wasn't the Jedi way. Mark will tell you after service. Are you talking about Palpatine? He looked like a California raisin. Anyway, back to the service. Back to the sermon. He did not save Mace Windu, but instead he saved Palpatine and he sold his soul to evil. There was a promise that was given to him that Padme would be saved. 
But, joke's on him, because Padme still dives in childbirth. He fights Obi-Wan and loses both of his legs. He loses his arm in an earlier battle, and he almost dies. And he is on life support for the rest of his life. So what happens when you choose evil. But, let's get back to the Bible. Lot in Genesis 19 is at a similar crossroads. So let's back it up for just a second. Abraham is visited by God and two angels, and they're telling him about the birth of his son, but then they go out and they look at Sodom and Gomorrah, and God tells them, hey, I'm about to destroy this place. He said, the evil has become so bad that they're crying out, and I'm going to destroy it. And so he tells them, he said, look, if you can find 50, or if I can find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I won't destroy it. And then him and Abraham go back and forth, and ultimately God says, if I can find 10 righteous people, I won't destroy it. Now, let's, let's look at this comparatively. There's about 65,000 people in Sodom, estimated. There are about 80 or 9,800 people in Jessup. So Sodom was about seven times larger than Jessup, and he could not find 10 righteous people in 65,000 people. So this place is about to get blown up, if you don't know. But the angels go to the city, and they go and they... They're knocking on the gate, and what they find out is that Lot had not only moved into the city, but he has become like a judge. So he's powerful in the city of Sodom. He had completely enveloped the culture of the city. But here's the thing. When he went, he didn't have a wife, but now he's married. He's got two daughters, and his daughters are about to be married, which means he's been there for a while, and he understands the culture, and he's a judge over these people. So he's got power, which means he's enveloped the sin, or at least part of it, of the city. <clears throat> so the angels come, and they say, hey... We want to talk to you, but we're going to spend the night in the city, in the, the square, where, like, where everybody meets. And he was like, nah, man, we can't do that. Because Saul, or Saul, because Lot knew how sinful the city was. And so he says, please come, I beg you, come into my house, you can spend the night in the house. So he does. Don't y'all too argue over this. But, but the men start beating down the door. They're like, hey, we know the two men that you brought in here. Send them out here so we can have relations with them. That's the PG version. Um, but he's like, no. He said, I've got these two daughters. I will send them out. They've never been with a man. Now, I'm not going to argue why this happened, but it was terrible. It was wrong, and it never should have happened. And we're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. But I think Lot partially knew that it wasn't going to happen in the first place. But he never should have offered them to begin with. But he was trying to protect these men. So the, the men of Sodom turned their back on, on uh, Lot, and they like shoved him against the door and like tried to beat the door down. That's how badly they wanted to get to these two men. There were well, these angels that were disguised as men. And so the angels pull him in the house and they close the door. They strike all the men with blindness. And then they give Lot this warning like, look, you need to get out. This city is about to be destroyed. He said, tomorrow the city is going to be destroyed. You need to get yourself and your family out of here. So he goes and he tells his two son-in-laws, he's like, look, the city is going to be destroyed. And they laugh at him because they don't think it's going to happen. They think it's a joke. How many times do we talk to people about sin and they laugh at us? They think it's a joke that it's never going to happen, but at some point God is going to judge the world, just like he judged Sodom. And so he warned them, but they didn't care. And so he ended up, the next morning he was still hesitant about it because that was his whole life. And God was telling him, it's time to move on, it's time to get out of here. And so literally what happens is the angels drag his family, his, himself, his wife, and his two daughters, drags them outside of the city to get them out. And says, you guys need to run and don't look back. And so they start running to go to this other city. Meteors or whatever you want to call it starts raining down from the sky, destroying the city. And Lot's wife turns around and becomes super salty. She becomes a pillar of salt. Yes? Fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Ah, thank you. Ah. Anyway. But so God rescues him from that. And so we see that as we continue on through the story of Anakin with the story of Lot, we see that, that they aren't just left into this terrible position. We see there's grace that abounds. So we're going to look at how... Oh, I don't have a quote for this one. I had to make that up. I couldn't find one. So grace abounds. We're going to go to 2 Peter 2, 7 and 8 in just a second, but I want to show you another video of what happens with Darth Vader. So let's play that video. I don't own the rules of this one either. That's Palpatine. Or Darth Sidious now. Yeah. That is Anakin. Who is now Darth Vader. Yeah. So 
So Anakin is at his moment of crisis. So he has to make a decision. Is he going to let him die? So he takes Darth Sidious and yeets him down the power tube. Is he dead now? Until the remake. <laughs> Disney ruined Star Wars. And next slide. So what happens after this is that Darth Vader eventually dies. Sorry, ruined it. But after all the suffering that Anakin went through, all the suffering that he caused we see the end of his life that he was still able to be redeemed. Through the relationship to his son, he ended up making the right decision and saving his son and ultimately sacrificing his life. So even though he was reunited with his son, it was short-lived. What happens in the movie is that he and Anakin, or he and Luke escape, and he gets right to the, the ship to where they're going to leave. He takes off his mask, he sees his face, and he dies. So, but Anakin is redeemed. And then what happens at the end of the movie, and I'm pretty sure this was added after the new ones were remastered, but we see Anakin is a ghost, like a force ghost or whatever, which shows that he was once again a Jedi. So he was redeemed in the story of Anakin. Now, let's go to the redemption of Lot. And this is where we're going to turn to 2 Peter, verses, um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 through 8. And this is why I love the Word of God. Part of it. It says, And if he rescued righteous Lot, you see he called him, rest, he called him righteous, Lot, this man that was living in the city filled with sin, he, Peter calls him righteous. And says, if God rescued righteous Lot, oppressed by the sensual conduct of unprincipled men, for by what he saw and heard, that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by their lawless deeds. So what Peter is saying is that Lot was surrounded by all the sin and it tormented his soul. Because he knew what he was supposed to do. He knew what righteousness was. And even though he tried to do it, he had those moments to where he messed up and he participated in the culture of the city. So although Lot settled in Sodom and became a high-ranking judge, he was not forgotten by God. He made poor choices, he made bad decisions, but he was not forgotten. God saved him from Sodom, and then we see this promise or this encouragement that God had Peter write in 2 Peter 2, 7 and 8, showing that even though Lot made mistakes, even though Lot was part of the city of Sodom, that God rescued him, and he was counted as righteous. Which that should be encouragement to all of them, all of us. Even though Lot had softened his faith and his righteousness, even though Lot had gone down this road to where he was making small compromises and getting deeper and deeper into sin, we see that God saw him as a righteous man when it was all said and done. God redeemed him because Lot repented, which is why he's in Second Peter chapter 2. So let's look at our redemption. You know, what does this have to say about all of us? Let's look at verse 9. It says, then, talking about if God can redeem Lot and save Lot, it says, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment, and especially for those who indulge in the flesh in its corrupt desires and despise authority. So there's two promises being made in this verse. First of all, saying those of you that are believers in Christ, God can keep you from temptation. As in, there's no temptation that can overtake you. There's no temptation that is so powerful that you cannot withstand it. You just have to be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if you do mess up, guess what? God will forgive you as long as you repent. But it's also a warning to those that are lost, saying that if they continue to live in their sin and don't repent, then eternal damnation is their, is their home. They're going to die and go to hell. They're going to be separated from God for all eternity. So both Anakin and Lot left their godly mentors and godly influences. They separated themselves from their godly influences. They both faced consequences for their actions, but both were ultimately redeemed because they repented and they did what was right. Each of you need to listen to the godly influences in your life. Every day you are at a crossroads of whether you are going to be faithful to God or you're going to be faithful to sin. I'm not saying you're going to lose your salvation, but I'm saying that every day you are faced with whether or not you are going to continue this walk with Christ or you're going to make a mistake. You're going to fall into temptation. 
And so you have to be ready for that. Consequences follow both, whether they're beneficial or they're detrimental. But if you do fall into temptation, it does not have to be the end of your story, just like it was not Anakin's or Lot's. Though the sac- or through the sacrifice of Christ, we are redeemed as believers. And if you are not a, a Christian, you can be redeemed. All we have to do is repent of our sin, and that means to turn away from that sin and never do it again. And so through repentance, we can follow and trust Christ. So let me summarize everything that we talked about. First of all, you need to choose wisely. This isn't on here. But whenever you come to a decision, you need to make sure that you are being as obedient to the Holy Spirit as you possibly can be. You need to choose wisely because those small things are going to cause us to go down this road that we never thought we would go. Anakin never thought that he was going to be one of the most evil Sith that ever existed. Lot never thought that he was going to be indulging in the sin of Sodom. So choose wisely. Watch out for trouble. There's always going to be trouble around the corner. Especially when we get complacent in our faith or we get lazy in our faith, that's when trouble is really going to hit because we're not going to recognize it as being trouble. So make sure you are always watching out for trouble. Next, pay attention to those crossroads. There's going to be times in your life, like I said, on a daily basis to where you're going to have the opportunity to be faithful or not. So every time you come to one of those crossroads, pray about it and make sure you are following the Holy Spirit and not your flesh. And then finally, as a reminder, God's grace is available for his children. If you are a believer in Christ, if you are willing to repent, that is going to restore that relationship that we have with God. If you are not a believer, salvation is available to you through repentance and trusting Christ as your Savior.